Hi, I'm Morris Parker, and welcome to the final race of the Powerade Super Skiff Series. It's been a great series, and this is race number nine. Let's go to the starting lineup. Richard Ellis, Foster's Light Ice, Pace Express, Mitsubishi Electric, 2UE Barracuda, Hogs Breath Cafe, Lexmark, Yandu, AFS, FGI, Line 7. Rack Roof Racks, West Coast Cooler, Leighton Contractors, IT&T, Skilled Contract Labour, World Exchange, Jindalee, Aspie, Sail Shades and Shade Sail. It's a glorious day down here on Sydney Harbour. Let's look at today's sailing conditions. It's a fine and sunny day, a light breeze, east to northeast, wind 12 knots, temperature 18.5 degrees. And all skippers have chosen large rigs, so really a perfect day for sailing. Tony Reynolds joins me in expert commentary. How are you, Tony? Hi, Morris. Well, thank you. The crew is preparing for the final race of the Powerade Super Skiff Series, race number nine. The final adjustments being made on the beach, Morris. That's it. Standing them up, getting ready to chuck them in. It's been a great series so far, hasn't it, Tony? Oh, sensational, Sally, Morris. Sensational. As uh, Anthony Young, skipper of the FGI, talking to his crew, giving him a few final points. That must have been Anthony Young's mother, I think. <laughs> well said. We'll be back with the start of race number nine in the Powerade Super Skiff Series. Welcome back to Sydney Harbour for the Powerade Super Skiff Series, our final race, race number nine. And Tony Reynolds has been out already to do the course. Tony, let's go through it. Another nice nor'easter today. The friendly sea breeze coming down to the double bay, working up to the windward mark, setting the gear, running down to the jibe, round the jibe mark, down to the lee mark, get it down, work back up through the gate, up round the windward mark again, down to the finish. There they are now, most jogging for the start. Race number nine. It's been a great series so far, and then they're racing in the final one. They're away, Morris. Next mark, I like his start there today. Trevor Barnabas in the 2UE, not so good. Foster's light eyes, down to Lewitt. Mitsubishi further to Lewitt. Lex Mark again, got the fresh air, got the clean breeze, chopping through the water. Look at him going over the top of skill, just running over the top of the skill. That's a great start there, as you mentioned, by Lex Mark. Terrific start. Lex Mark, uh, AI pace further to windward. He's out of picture, but uh, he also has got a great start. But look at uh, the Mitsubishi, just trucking straight above the Mitsubishi in the line seven, footing particularly well. Boat's flat, sailing well, sheet hand and skipper again working well together. Little cherub there in the way and uh, pushing, calling him out, calling him out. Get out of my way, son, get out of my way. Hogs Breath Cafe, AFS. The Aspie boat there, two miles. Jinder Lee, haven't seen much of Jinder Lee. There's the Jinder Lee coming from Newcastle. The rack moving to the, I've got a bad start, the rack, so Carl's decided to go to the other side of the course and look for the fresh air. TUE likewise going to the other side, covering the West Coast Cool. It's a Bishy Boys doing the same thing. Warren Miller staying on course, he's going with it, going the same way. But there's the, there's the pace, AEI pace, you can see him in shot there, and uh, he and Lex Mark again, the super skips, the fast movers through the water, and uh, they've got good starts. AEI pace also now moving to the other side of the course, Miles. And of course, as you mentioned, the fleet does tend to split up, don't they? Well, they're always looking to get the fresh air, you know, and um, yeah, so you've got to break, break tax and, and go for it if you're not in the lead. Great shot there from the air of all the fleet in action. AFS sailing well there too. Graham's made another nice start, as has the Hogsbeth Cafe. Again, starting off the lower end of the line. Just about on board there with uh, Schooled. Right in, the, right in the cockpit of the boat there, Morris. Rod Waterhouse and his lads sailing well. They got a pretty handy start. They're over the top of the Aspie boat there. We're, sorry, we haven't, we haven't seen a great deal of Aspie, have we? Stephen McConnick, as I've said, new to the boats. Um, more of an Olympic-type sailor than a skiff sailor, so he's really feeling his way in the skiffs, but uh, I have no doubt that um, Aspie and he will come good. Stephen came back just recently from Canada, where he came third in the Sailing Worlds Championships. 
FGI there. Anthony Young got it going nicely today too. Working to windward, working towards Manly. There's the Hogsmeade going through the it goes the, the about or the stay. So they head down towards Manly, then back towards Double Bay, then back to Manly again. That's it, Morris. Working against the sea breeze. In summer in Sydney, the sea breeze has come off the ocean and drive in towards the, the, in towards the, the land mass. And in summer, we always get uh, nice sea breezes or northeasters, and uh, we call them the friendly breezes down here at Double Bay. They're both straight into us. Still reaching here, the boat wants to come up, that's all, so be careful, it might just go into windward. It's on the hell lift here, good work guys. In Dave, in, in mate, good work. I don't know what we've got. Craig talking to his uh, crew there. Tony, over the years, how have the crews changed? Well, dramatically, Morris, as you can see today, we're sailing with three men in the boat. Four or five years ago, we did try, or some of the crews did try to sail with two men. That wasn't successful. But going back in the history of the thing, they used to sail with 14 and 15 men. And uh, mainly it was a, a summer sport for the football players. So JJ Giltram used to send out his front row forwards from Balmain and the Roosters and the various football clubs. And the boats would be really inundated with these great big heavy men that were basically used as ballast. And of course, if the breezes lightened off, the idea was they'd lighten the crew off. So. They'd find themselves sailing past Point Pipe and they'd say, OK, Joe and Tom and Harry, you're off here, boys. We don't need your weight anymore. Swim home and we'll see you later. Make sure you've got the cab money or the bus money. And So they used to start off with 15, 16 fellas in the boat and sometimes come home with 10 at the end of the day. I mean, I just find it very hard to picture so many guys in a boat like this. Well, they're much bigger boats in those days. They're wooden boats and they're much more like big open sort of boats, altogether different. But I think we've got the three crew, uh, it's probably the optimum, I think, with the, the size and sails and the, boat, the way the boats work, I think we're probably going to finish up spending the next foreseeable future with three crew on the boat. Going around the first mark now, Tony? Going around for the set, mowers. There goes the Australian Freight Services for the set. Aspie, Yandu, and it looks like Lexmark, Lexmark. all going around the mark there. Lexmark in a handy position again today, so to AFS. They say, I got the set on, got the boat away. Sheenan's still got to balance the boat. But once the spinnaker's set, it, it, it is a combination between forward hand and, and, and skipper running and, and getting away with the boats. But the sheet hand still uses the main to also help balance the boat. So off a breeze, all three men are really working, but it's predominantly the forward hand and the skipper. Tony, you mentioned to me one day in the club, you had a strange sort of job when you first started sailing. You also actually had to empty out the boats, didn't you? Well, I was once a kid and I used to... Uh, Live not far from the club, and I remember getting a ride a few times on the old Jenny 7. And they gave, I was a little boy of about 14 or 13, and they gave me this little wooden thing and sat me in the middle, and I was what they called a bailer boy, because the boats in those days had no buoyancy, and if they capsized, they'd sink. And the, the guy in the middle used to have to try and keep the water out with this little bailer. And um, they didn't let you off lightly because they didn't want to sink too much, you know. It was a pretty hard job. But yes, they did sink, and if they capsized, their day was over, and they'd flounder and sit around in the harbour till somebody came and gave them a tow home. But as you've seen through the Powerade Service Skiff series this time, that when the boats now capsize, they're very readily, readily rideable because of the buoyancy within the boats. Line 7 and Lexmark performing very well in this race, Tony, aren't they? Well, they're the consistent boats now, coming into the closing stages of the series, and um, AI with a handy, handy lead in the series, and I think uh, if he has a good race today, he should win it after the mishap of Richard Ellis running into the Cherub in the last race. AFS 2. Australian Freight Services has gone very well, considering that he had uh, the first two or three heats rather poor performances with a, um, and a different uh, sheet hand in the boat, which didn't help their cause. But I, I guess it, um, it looks to me as if uh, AEI gets a nice clean race today, he'll be hard to beat. Tony, just looking at the skiffs going across the water, they give the impression of being really light. Now, is that the case? We mentioned 82 before. Well, that's right, Mice. As we've said, they're very, very light, 82 and a half kilograms. A couple of fellas can easily lift them. And again, that wasn't always the case. The boats used to be big timber clinker boats, very heavy, and, uh, you know, filled with copper nails and very, very heavy. And they used to rig them on the sand and the foreshore so they didn't have to lift them in because they're just too heavy to lift in. The uh, high tech of today, of course, has made the incredible improvements in the weight. One of the most peculiar things to me was the weight of the old centerboards. The centreboards today, um, I mean, I, I guess I could lift three or four under one arm, but 
In those days, they were made of solid steel without the high-tech materials. They were made from solid steel, and I can remember it would take two or three men struggling to get these things into the water. So, of course, the weight of the boats, the, the centreboard was probably more weight than the, 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 the whole and the entire weight of the boat today. You things really have changed. <laughs> AFS there on screen. Lexmark doing very well in the final race of the series. Yandu, Mitsubishi Electric. I'll be pretty happy the way they're going, the boys in the Australian Faith Services. After winning the last heat, they're in a pretty handy position for this heat today as well. Terrific shot there of TOE Barracuda, the, the Harbour Bridge in the background. What a great sight. There's the boats on the run down, running down to the lure. Lexmark leads. No, no, I'm sorry, AI Pace leads. Lexmark, AFS, Yandu, Mitsubishi. Skilled having another good day. He's challenging Trevor Barnabas there, the, old, the new guard and the old guard. I'll tell you one thing, Tony. Pace Express looking very strong, aren't they, in this race? Well, I think, I think by, by my reckoning, they've only got to finish in the first three places now to win the series. Uh, that is, unless Richard Ellis gets up and wins by a country mile. And he's well back today, Richard Ellis. Back in a moment with more action. Welcome back to the final race in the Powerade Super Skiff Series. They've got a terrific race on our hands right now. There we can see Skilled on screen and Hog's Breath Cafe. Pretty close race here, Morris. AFS and uh, AI Pace. Lexmark having a pretty good day of it. AI again sailing well. Pace looking very strong there. Look, I hate to ask you this, Tony, but do you think people actually bet on these races? Well, Morris, what can I say? I guess it's part of the Australian psych to like a bet, you know. I think Australians have bet on two flies climbing up a wall, wouldn't they? So they probably do have a bet on these boats. AI getting the gear down. Rounding, getting the gear down, leading the race. They're looking, looking very strong, Tony, aren't they? Tidying up. Well, got to work back up now through the gate, up to the windward mark and have another set and come home to the finish. Going to be hard to beat them from there. Graham turning the Australian Freight Services, rounding second. Also having a pretty good series towards the end of it. <laughs> wow, great shot there. Look at that. Getting away from the mark well, nice and flat, tidying up. Lexmark rounding third. Been pretty inconsistent, Lexmark. He's um, won two heats, but I think he's going to be lucky if he can finish in the first four or five boats overall because whilst he's won a couple of heats, he's had a couple of poor finishes and that just counts against you. Consistency plays such a big part in this type of sailing at this level. So around this mark then, back up to Manly? Back towards Manly, up to the windward mark for the reset and then the run back to the finish. Johnny winning, getting his gear away. Too late, too, too slow, too untidy. Got to brush their crew work up the old guard. Mitsubishi Electric there, and it looks as if Skill may be having some problems as well. Skill just driving back to, to, to go around, as is Hog's Breath Cafe, TUE, and Aspie, of course, with the gear off there. And of course, uh, let's just talk about what's coming up, Tony, as they go around the mark there. In January, we've got the World Championships. That's right, Morris. That's the biggie. That's the big one, fighting foot skips. We're holding the World Championships on Sydney Harbour this year. Um, Fifteen of these boats will qualify for the World Championships to represent New South Wales in those championships. We've got boats coming from America, New Zealand, UK, the UK, Switzerland, Italy, Sweden sending a boat down, the Japanese are coming down. Gonna be fantastic, very interesting sailing when all those people get together. Back into the race, they're, they're going around the mark. Gaggle of boats at the bottom mark, tidying up, getting around. West Coast Cooler doing not a bad job to stick with the line seven. Foster's Light Ice you saw there coming around, they're improving, they're getting better, the boys and the Fosters. Tony, how do you think we will go on the World Championships in January? We'd have to be a, a, a strong bet, wouldn't we, the Australians? Well, we've raced for it many times, you know. It's now been held 60 times. It's, 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 a, it's a great historical event. But uh, the New Zealanders have won it a few times, and the Queenslanders have won it a few times, taking it up to the northern state. But uh, so far, none of the Europeans or the Americans have won it. We've had a few good American crews. Uh, there was one particular crew, I think, that came second from the USA back in about the 19, late 1960s, early 70s. We had a very good American crew coming down for a while, but... 
they haven't quite got to us yet. Although I like the look of some of the English boys. Some of the English boys are now really starting to get on the pace. I was recently over in the European series watching them, and there's some pretty good sailors now going around in the, in the Great Britain cruise. So yachts from all around the world sailing here on Sydney Harbour in January. That's it, Morris. Oh, what's happened? Oh, look, something's gone over there, Tony. Shade sails, put her in. Michael Boyd. That's the end of his day. They'll be going back to the clubhouse now. Back for beer. There's uh, Warren Miller just trying to sail over the top of Anthony Young through the gate. The FGI with Anthony sailing it. Michael Aston, Mel Thompson in that boat with him. There's Richard Ellis there on screen. And of course the World Championships have seen lots of champions, haven't they? Oh, well there's been some wonderful people win the World Championships in 18 foot skiffs. None less of course than Ben Lexon. Ben Lexon was a great supporter of uh, the 18 foot skiff movement as a whole and was a great supporter of our club. And um, of course went on to design the uh, Australia boat that won the America's Cup. So too, of course, Ian Murray was a great uh, supporter and still is of the 18-footers at Double Bay. And the Lexmark you're looking at screen there was designed and built by Ian for the club. I think that um, Yuri Trahan and Bishul and oh dear, it's just endless the amount of Australian famous yachts people who have won this world's championships at Double Bay. And um, the McKells in New Zealand, as I said, did win it and they're pretty well recognised in New Zealand as their foremost yachtsmen. Bruce Farr at one stage was a keen designer of the 18-footers as well and he sailed in them for a couple of seasons, Bruce Farr being in New Zealand or the famous New Zealand yacht designer. But I like these boats, I like these Murray boats, these Lexmarks are pretty quick unit as I've said. What's the actual cost, Tony, of putting one of these boats into the water? Well, the boats can cost anything from about $30,000 to $50,000 to build today. Believe it or not, Morris, that's a lot less than they used to cost. We've brought in rules to control the cost because the cost at one stage just got absolutely ridiculous. The boats were costing anything up to $200,000. But today, if you do a lot of the work yourself, you can put a brand new boat in the water for $30,000. Factory built and factory delivered will probably cost you the best part of fifty. And I guess it helps if you have sponsors as well. Well, of course, I mean, it's a wonderful thing that these corporates do, you know. These corporates are really um, displaying their own company signage and names, I know, but really they're doing a community service by supporting the, the talent and the youth of Australians yachting, and it's a fantastic thing they do, and they've all got commitments of varying amounts with these boats, but some may be paying as much as twenty-five or 30000 but that'll be the top, and others may be only supporting the crews to the tune of ten or 15000 but as I say, I think it's a wonderful thing that Corporate Australia does get behind the yachting movement of Australia with the 18 foot skips the way it does. Look at AI Pace there. I mean, what they're doing is really helping those men provide and develop their talents in yachting. Pace Express having a great race, the final race in the series at the moment. Looking terrific there. They look relaxed, Tony. Well, that's, that's the sign of the, the, the good ones. That's the sign of the good ones in anything. And yes, they're relaxed. And they know that uh, they've just got to get up around this window mark, get the kite on, get the boat down to the finish, and they're going to be picking up the wonderful Power 8 Super Skiffs Championship trophy. They'll be careful. They'll be watching the other boats. They'll be keeping their minds on it. You know, it's a hell of a concentration working a boat to win. But Stephen Quigley's trying to play every wave, and the sheet hand's trying to play every puff of the breeze, and the... Every moment the breeze changes direction, it never consistently comes from the one area. ran out of air, that was all. No air here, guys, that's all. If everyone's doing 2 to one that's why. On board there with Skill giving us a, a skipper's view of the race. Well, he's, he's certainly coming better, uh, Craig Phillips. As the series proceeded, he's got better with every race. Like the look of the way he sails, he's going to be a force in these boats. You have Pace Express there on the screen at the moment, currently leading the final race in this series. There's plenty more action to come. Don't go away. The Powerade Super Skiff Series coming to you from Sydney Harbour. Welcome back to the Powerade Super Skiff Series. We're coming to the closing stages of the final race of the series. Here they go, around the top, Mark Morris. Pace AI leads around the top. AFS, Australian Faith Services. John Owen Richard pulling the gear up. 
There goes the gear on the pace, AI. Eh? Oh, nice set. Get her away, boys. Come on. Running home for the money. Tony, these kind of skits, will they ever be in the Olympics, do you think? Well, Morris, one never knows about those sorts of things, what's, what, what the future holds. But if they were, we'd be most interested in partaking in that and being in it because being the traditional home of the 18-foot skip and with our associations with the AYF, we'd like to think that we'd be part of and be in it, yes. During the Sydney 2000 Games, there's going to be lots of action on the harbour. You guys will be helping out? Well, we've offered our services to the AYF to support the CYC, the Queensland Yacht Club of Australia, which is staging the events for the Olympic Games. And, of course, being in Double Bay and being a neighbour of the uh, Rush Cutters Bay Club, should they need us, we'll be there to support them in every possible way we can. I mean, it's up to everybody in Sydney that uh, loves this waterway and loves this city to get behind Australia's 2000 campaign. And we certainly are at Double Bay and right behind it. Tony, while I've got you here, can I just book uh, at least two tickets for the closing ceremony so I can sit there at Double Bay and watch it? Do you mind? <laughs> well, Morris, I'm sure we'll let you in, but, uh, well, we might, and, you know, we're, we're pretty far. No, I'm only kidding. Of course, it'd be lovely to have you down for the final stages, Morris, of the Olympic Games. We're all looking forward to 2000. Fantastic for Sydney. Well, we get to the closing stages of this series, the Power Aid Super Skiff Series, coming to you from Sydney Harbour. There's Lex Mark there. Lex Mark on the run home. Australian Freight Services on the run home. AI Pace leading, Australian Fate Services second, Lexmark third, three Maui boats, three of the new boats, as I've said, all the way through the series, three of the quick boats, first, second and third today for the money, I'd say. AI Pace looking very strong, they're going to do a great trip, there's the end of it there on screen. We'll go back to Pace in just a moment, they've got a great lead at the moment, Tony, haven't oh, they? Well, they've, they've really straighted them today, he started right away from them, today hasn't been lost. Led all the day long and just got further and further and further in front. Here are some of the stragglers now up, still at the top mark, and AEI Pace just nearly down to the finish. And they're just setting up. AEI Pace is just about, I'd say, right on the money to finish. As they head towards back towards Double Bay. Hogsbeth just coming around for the set. Mitsubishi doing quite well today. Ben Derwin, skilled, also done well today. This. Yes, they've won it, yes. There's the AI, they're the winners. They've yes, won they've the money again. Yes, well done, guys. Congratulations. Fantastic job today. Fantastic job from the boys today in the AI pace. Tony, it still could be anybody's series, though, could it? No, I think today, just working the reckonings here, I'm a, I'm a paper here in front of my mouse, but that'll give the series to the AI pace. I think they've won the money. They're the, the, the series winners. Richard Ellis will come second in the series. Uh, that uh, collision he had with the Cherub in the last heat has cost him dearly because... Um, that has put him back, and then, of course, today he's only had a tenth. So his last two series, or his last two heats, have really knocked him back to second. Graham Turner will be third overall, and he'll be very happy with that. As two will line seven, fourth overall. Lexmark will come home fifth. It's interesting with Lexmark Morris to note that Lexmark Wallace won two heats, just hasn't been consistent enough. So you can't say it, really. You've got to say it over and over. Consistency in this type of sailing is, is most paramount. Lexmark, two wins, but fifth overall. And the boys in Mitsubishi have done well. Ben and uh, Richard and Mark have finished up sixth overall, and they'll be pretty happy with that. So that's it. AEI Pace have won the series. Richard Ellis will be second. AFS, Australian Freight Services, third. Line seven, fourth. Lex Marks, fifth. Mitsubishi, sixth. Interesting also to note, Mullis, that uh, five of those boats are, are Murray designed new boats. Tony, let's go and talk to the skippers. Good afternoon for us. We had a little bit of kind of sorts of problems out, but uh, we're pretty happy with the afternoon, actually. Very great series, and uh, I'm not quite sure where we're going to end up, but it's, uh, it's been pretty good for us. Yeah, well done, boys. It's been a great effort again. You guys are really going well. Yeah, we, uh, we got another good start. Uh, had a good first move. Just managed to get over the top of the pole stretch at the, uh, the top mark. The boys did a fantastic job getting the shooter up. Craig picked the angle on the way down, just right on the knocker, around the mark, and uh, the rest is history. We've been happy to get out of that traffic. Yeah, we're pretty happy with our boat speed at the moment. The first three weeks we did fairly well, and in the middle we, uh, we went off the boil a bit. With a little risk, we've still got a bit of work to do there. But with the big one, we're quite confident. Well, once again, we're right. getting off the line and away, which always helps. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Let's look at Race 9's results. In first spot, AI Pace Express, AFS, 
Lexmark, skippered by Greg Patterson. Now to the overall points table for the Powerade Super Skiff Series. Let's look at the top five. AI Pace Express on 64, Richard Ellis 53, AFS with 50 points, Line 7, a great series, 44, Lexmark, 42. Let's go to Tony Reynolds with the presentations. Well, it's really great to be here uh, this afternoon, boys, with the uh, proud winners of the Powerade Super Skiff Series. It's been a great series, I'm sure you'll agree. And Stephen, I'd like to personally congratulate you for a fantastic job. Craig on the sheet, you Thanks, also Tony. a great job. Chris, you didn't let them down a minute, mate. You did a great job for them. And I'd like to present the three of you to share in the uh, winning of the Power 8 Super Skip Series. Thank you, Tony. Congratulations again, man. Well done. Thanks very much. Tony, great winners there. And Tony, a great series overall. Boris, it has been a great series. And for me, I must just say to you, I've enjoyed working with you. It's been a great learning curve for me watching you do this thing and as we've gone through it. And uh, I would also say to Power 8, fantastic Power 8, thank you for your support. Morris, we look forward to seeing you again and being together possibly to do the World's Championships, huh? Tony, if you ask me, I'll be there. Looking forward to it.